Barakatha Yahweh, Malach Hawalam. Haggadah Alahayim of our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. Halal Yah, Halal Yah. Abba Yahweh, we come to you now on your holy set apart day, this Shabbat. First and foremost, giving you all the praise and the esteem for you are the one and only true Elohim of all creation of all this universe. You sustain us, Abba Yah. You have love and mercy and grace on your people. And we say, Halal Yah, Toda Reba Abba. And as we come together, Abba Yah, now, to learn more of our culture, reconnect with our language. We just ask Abba Yah that you bless us with your Ruach HaKodash, your Holy Spirit, to guide us in the truth, the understanding, to give us a zeal with knowledge, Abba Yah, of the Kwadash, the Holy, the blessed language of our culture that you gave us. Abba Yahweh just asked that you inspire Moray Samak as he leads this lesson, that you open our ears and soften our hearts. And allow your word, your instruction to penetrate our lives, Abba Yah, that we can put it to work in our lives and be a true reflection of you, Abba Yah. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name. Halal Yah, Halal Yah. Toda Reba, Abba, Aman. Hallelujah, 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 and amen, wa amen, aman, aman. All right, Mr. Rikha, I'm not going to be before you long with this portion today. Um, screen share going, give me one moment. What's going on? Well, while, while I will get my screen prepared, uh, Ms. Rikai, um, there's a couple of things uh, that are just as a quick review, just of the language in general. Um, of course, you know, Hebrew is read from right to left and uh, English is read from left to right. Uh, what is it not showing up? Sleek up one moment. Why is it not showing up? Close that, come again. I'll build one more because it's not showing up. Uh, Moray, you want me to uh, continue on in that uh, vein while you get things set up? Yes, sir, please. God. So what Moray was, was reminding us, reviewing us, you know, like he said, that Hebrew is read from right to left um, and the English is read from left to right. Um, Hebrew, unlike English, is a concrete language. There's not a lot of, uh, how can I put it, uh, imagination, so to speak. The, a word means what it means for the most part. Um, and so uh, when we connect with this language, when we reconnect with this language, the one thing that we gotta start to remember is that it's the Hebrew language, the thoughts, the, 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 the construction of thought in Hebrew, you know? Um, and then uh, further down, uh, as we get more advanced in the language, then we'll start seeing how the language, um, written language is constructed and how it's um, interpreted.
And one more thing too, um, even in English, there's a feminine and a masculine form of the word, but in this Hebrew language, it's really prominent. It's really um, um, distinctive, um, the feminine form and the masculine form. All right, that's it. It is kind of critical in this language, unlike English, you know. And and I'm sure Moray is going to touch on um, how the masculine and the feminine um, is expressed, and why it's expressed in those forms. Well, I rebuke the adversary on this morning. It seems like every time we get together on Shabbat, I want to have some difficulties. Y'all just bear with me one more moment. You want me to try and field some questions, uh, Maury? Yes, yes, you can take some questions. Give me a moment. Kind, kind. Anybody got a question, just, just raise your hand. I'll try and answer it. Um, if not, I'll take note, and I'm sure uh, Maury Samark will be able to answer. I see your hand, Shashamar Adol. It's about Shalom, yeah. Um... Are there any tips for getting that throat sound for um, certain letters, such as, um, uh, was it Chet, I believe? Um, any tips? Uh, I, I would suggest that, um, uh, that's a good question. Um, sometimes you can listen to uh, someone that speaks Hebrew you know, but if you're not if you're not familiar with the, the letter or the word that they're using, it's not really going to be helpful. The only thing I can really suggest is pay attention to these lessons and then practice. Just you got to practice it. You know, um, um, the way it's explained in in writing in this text, um, in this syllabus is kind of a handicap when it comes to actually practicing it. So what I would what I would suggest is um, take note. Um, I think um, uh, uh, Captain Yohanan records these, so if and he posts them. So if you if you can if you find them on either his page, his YouTube page, or go back to um, the uh, Telegram and yeah. listen and listen. So. You know, like that, that, that het is um, a real rough um, kind of pronunciation, like ha, 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 you know, and it's kind of like Spanish, learning how to roll your tongue, you know, so, so in this Hebrew, it's kind of, um, it just takes practice, your throat is not used to making that, um, that, that, your muscles, the muscles of your throat and your diaphragm are not used to making those kind of sounds. So it's just going to take practice. Okay, yeah, I got a little better at that sound, but I think it's a little bit more complex when you have that letter in front of a, oh, with a, a vowel sound under it, you know, so just a patak or, you know, huh. see, go, you know, kind of. All right. Told that, told that, told that, don't. Uh, yeah, uh, a real short shot. Just the more and more you practice, the better and better you get at it. And just do note, note that uh, a lot of us may pronounce sounds so, so, somewhat differently because none of us actually spoke it from the ancient dialect ourselves. So we just try to do in the best. What is going on with this? I didn't even touch anything. The adversary is trying to uh, be busy today. What in the world is going on? Um, so, um, you know, so we're just working. The fact that we can read it and, um, and make the sounds as best as we can but don't beat yourself up over if you can't get a sound exactly like someone else gets the sound. Um, and as we go forward, there are going to be certain things such as accent marks and things like that. It's going to tell you how to accent a word, which will give you a different vocalization of a word. So all that will come down the road. And we're going at a slow pace. Uh, we're going at a slow pace for a reason, because the only way you really get this language is by, uh, by repetition. And the more you repeatedly go over it, the more you practice it. That's why we say work on it on your own time as well. So you better uh, better get the language and get more familiar with it. Um, and again, uh, even though, like I said, this is going to be a basic to intermediate uh, class, we kind of been covering a lot of the basics. But uh, and I've been missing for a few weeks, but we will start getting back to the point where we'll be mixing basic and intermediate level, so that those who have already been through the beginning several times 
um, won't uh, feel like in the, they're in a stagnant place, even though it's a good rehearsal and practice for them as well. But um, we will be actually uh, speeding up uh, in some areas at some point. All right, so what we're gonna be at today, um, uh, we're going, to, um, uh, going into the ending forms. So I know y'all have already studied your alphabet as we was covering Hebrews red from right to left. And I heard uh, Zykane Yaqua bringing out the fact that there's gonna be things such as masculine, uh, masculine and feminine. So um, words for female uh, verbs and nouns will be spelled slightly different than word for a masculine or a male. Um, there's also uh, verb tense, past tense, future tense, different things like that. That all comes down the road. Right now, we're just trying to get familiar with the recognition of the letters, the vowels, the sounds, um, the different dialects as we'll be covering some of these things um, as we go forward because we're going to make it through the, uh, this is what we call, call the Assyrian or the modern alphabet. Then we're going to come back and we're going to go through the uh, paleo or the ancient alphabet which is actually my preferred alphabet to use because that's, if you actually go read any of the things that our forefathers wrote, they did not write in this Assyrian script, such as Moses um, and all those who the word were actually given to, they wrote in the Paleo script. However, the majority of the Torahs and Tanakhs that you find today, or if you go to a synagogue or any other school of thought and you're gonna read from the scrolls, they're gonna have the scrolls written in the Assyrian script. So the script that we're going over now is what's called the modern, uh, modern Hebrew script. They all still have the same, uh, the script is just different. But the, uh, if, if one of the hosts, if y'all can monitor the room and uh, let the people that's in the room that's trying to come in, please. Um, if y'all can keep a monitor on the room. Um, so, what, so what we're covering right now is the modern script uh, or what's called, uh, what's actually the Assyrian script, but uh, the preferred script is, is the paleo, all right? So in the writings, uh, there are certain letters that have uh, two different forms. You have the its normal form in which it would appear at the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word. Then you have these five here that have an ending form, meaning that at the end of a word, these letters here would take on a different ending form, a different form at the end of a word. All right. So starting off, um, could I just get someone to tell me what these letters are in these columns? If someone can tell me what these letters are. And if the hands are raised as I can't yike out. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, uh, Miss Marsha, the floor is yours. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. I think the first one is cough. Yes. The second one is mem. Yes, ma'am. The third one is noon. Um, hey. All right, all right. And Sade. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great job, great job. Somebody been practicing, somebody okay. been working on them. Pray to the most high. All right, so she just went through. This is what the letters will look like in the in the uh, in their normal form. At the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, this will be the form that they take on. So as, as we said, first thing we have to do is get the uh, actual recognition of the letters and the pronunciation of the letters. And so that's what we're working on now. She just did a great job. So we have the Kaf, the Mem, the Nun, the Peyafe, and the Zade, right? So that's what these letters will look like at the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word, okay? So these five letters, they also have an ending. And the reason why you hear sometimes when we are uh, reading Hebrew, even myself, you will hear us get stumbled up sometimes is because once the letters start taking on a different form, um, you have to go back to certain grammar rules. You have to remember which letters change forms. Some letters actually, as y'all have went over already, some letters have look-alike letters. So you have look-alike letters, sometimes just like this letter here. Um, it, it is the cough, right? This is the cough at the beginning or in the middle. This is what's gonna look like if it's the last letter in the word. But what other letter do y'all recognize? Oh, if you look at this letter, what other letter does it look like to you? Say it louder. Dalit. Okay, hallelujah. So it looks just like a dialect. But what you will recognize that actually in the word, the dialect is going to be on the line level with the other letters. This cough right here, when it's on the final form, it actually extends below the line and it's actually elongated. The, uh, this line here is elongated longer than what it is on the dialect. But other than that, they look exactly the same. So sometimes when people are just getting new to reading the Hebrew, 
when they come to this actual letter at the end of a word, that's why you hear some people pronouncing words and you hear a da at the end when it should be a ka at the end is because they're getting the letter, the final form of kaf mixed up with the letter dalit. All right. So we have here the mem. This is at the beginning or in the middle of a word. And this is the form that would take on the final form of the mem. Uh, it's going to be closed here, whereas as you see it has an opening here and it's more smooth line at the top. This is going to be the mem. And of course, this is the handwritten form. Don't worry about this right now. So it's going to be a mem. So in the word for God in Hebrew that we have is Elohim. So the word for uh, God in, in, uh, 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 in its singular form would actually be Allah or Elah, right? Allah or Elah, that's singular. But when you hear the word Elohim, it has a, a ending. And this mem is the last letter in the word Elohim. So know the Most High is not more than one. It's only one, but in his infinite power, his infinite wisdom, his omnipresence, he's referred to in a multiple sense because he's the most highest of all. So when you're referring to him, a lot of times, instead of just referring to him as Allah or Allah, they refer to him as Elohim, the Supreme Being. But this is the final letter in the word for Elohim or Elohim, whichever Hebrew dialect one may utilize. All right. And so here is the final form. This is the beginning form of the noon. And at the end, this is the final form noon. What is a lookalike letter that just looks similar to to anyone? Zion. Okay, Zion. Okay, it can look sort of like a Zion. Does anyone see another letter that could possibly look alike? The Vav. Okay, the Vav or the Wa. So again, you can see why sometimes people will pronounce words the wrong way because this letter looks like a Zion or a Wav. But the thing that you start realizing the more that you practice is the way the letters, some of them have the elongated way, uh, rather up or down, or this, uh, this little participle of the letter here would have a difference. The Y is very short up here versus this elongated with indent here. All right. So then we have here, pay or fe, and you know that you have a dot that would go in here to dis differentiate when you pronounce it as an F or as uh, a PH as in phone. Um, but this is going to be it at the end of a letter. There's not another letter that looks like this, so it's never really um, confused, okay? But now this letter is Zade, and this is the final form. Does anyone see anything that it could possibly look like, sort of? Yeah, the I-N. The I-N. So at the end of a letter, at the, uh, and sometimes people may get the, the, the this form as well as the ending form mixed up, but generally the ending form can look a lot like the I-N, all right? So if y'all would just remember that, these five letters have a, what we commonly call a final form. And the final form is the form that it takes on at the end of a word and only at the end of a word. But the pronunciation remains the same. It is just the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the appearance that changes, all right? So let's look at one moment. All right, so um, you see here, it's showing you at the end of a word, uh, we have here uh, the uh, lamed and the kaf. So that's how it looks at the end of a word, okay? Here is it at the beginning of a word. This letter and this letter is the same letter, okay? Lamed, kaf, kaf, mem, va, wa, Kaf again. So this letter and this letter is the exact same letter. Okay. So we have here uh, aim, aim, or yom, and right here that's the mem, the mem, and here's the mem here in the middle of a word. Here that's the mem again. Same exact letter. It's just gonna have a different ending at the end of a word. So we have aim, and we have yom. And that's the mem. So what we're getting used to is the final forms. Um, and then we have here, amen, amen, amen. So this is, again, the mem is in the middle, but this is the noon, the final form noon here. Bane, final form noon here. When you go over to this side, you're gonna see it's giving you all of, all of them here. So this is the noon at the beginning, noon at the beginning noon at the ending, okay? And now we're coming over here to the uh, pay or fe. We have af, kaf, which is the final form, okay? 
Ats, rats, final form. And this is an I am here, all right? So in the beginning of the middle of a word, you see here, again, this is the cough in the middle of a word, cough in the middle of a word, mem at the beginning of a word, mem in the middle of a word, noon at the beginning of a word, noon in the middle of a word, pay in the middle, pay in the middle, but that's what it looks like at the end, okay? So just going over that real quickly, does anyone have any questions on that before we go forward? Because I'm gonna let you do some reading practice. Uh, we're gonna go to the reading practice, but before we go to the reading practice, I know I went over that pretty quickly. Um, so does anyone have any questions or do I, they need me to, okay, Shashmar, yes, sir. And yeah, the uh, the first group of letters you went to, um, where has it, Kane, yeah. Um, so that letter besides uh, Lamed, that's the, that let, correct? No, so good, that's a good question. So no, it's not the Dalit. That's okay, the, uh, yeah. That's the yeah, because I got confused. I was trying to figure out what vowel sounds, what those yeah. two dots represented. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about the vowel sounds right now. We just work working on the uh the final forms of these letters. So as we were saying here, this cough is what it looks like at the beginning and in the middle of a word. This is what it looks like in the end of a word. And that's why we was going into the uh point of that it looks like a dollar. So now when we come in here, I'm glad you asked that question because you see here it does look a lot like a dollar. So right now I'm not focused on any of the vowel points at this time. We're only focusing on recognizing this cough at the end of a word. So don't even worry about what these words are at the moment. We just want you to see that this is a lamed and this is the final form here, cough, which Thank looks you. exactly like a dalit almost, but it's longer than a dalit, okay? And as we go forward, I'll show you a dalit. Uh, let me see if they do have a dalit anywhere that I can show you. They don't have a dalit. Uh, yes, we do. See the difference here? Can't hear. Yeah. See the short, it's shorter. The dollar is actually shorter than the cough. So this right here is a dollar, but it's shorter than a cough. So at the end of a word, so all you have to do, or what you have to remember a lot of times is the majority of times, and I'll say the majority of times, but sometimes it can differ and it will be the short form. But at the end of a word, just look for that elongated line. And that uh, at the end of a word, more than likely it's going to be the cough in most words when you see this. And once you start reading it on a regular basis, so for example, look at this, this right here is a resh. This is not a cough. This is a resh. The resh and the dollar are in the same length because these two letters normally get confused also, the dollar and the resh, but this comes into the confusion or the lookalike letters, this final form cough. So what you start to recognize is how the resh and how the dollar are shorter than the final form cough, okay? That was a good question. So yeah, like so right now we wasn't worried about vowel points in this particular porch portion. I just want you to recognize these five letters and what they look like at the end of a word or at the beginning and on the middle of a word. All right. Any more questions before we go forward to to uh, to the practice? Right, and here's one of the things that can help you with that, uh, Shashamar, and what you just asked. It says the final form cough is usually written with two dots inside it. So um, in this particular instance, it said usually. Doesn't mean it always will be, but usually if it has these two dots, you know for sure that's gonna be a cough because there, there is a shiwa that looks like this, but this is not representing a shiwa necessarily here. But so in the final form of uh, cough, generally uh, sometimes it will have these two dots so that you know when to differentiate between um, a dalit resh or a final form cough. These dots have no sound. Sometimes the vowel uh, uh, quamets appears um, inside the final form, such as this, this is pronounced as ha, as ha, okay? So we're gonna go forward with the reading practice. Now, when we're going forward with the reading practice, we are gonna be focusing on the vowels in this reading practice. So you have to focus on the vowels as well as the letter recognition and pronouncing the sound of these uh, practice or uh, words that we're about to go into. All right, so we're gonna start off with the reading practice here. Uh, we have three. So do I have any volunteer that wants to start off with the reading practice? at this time to try to go through recognizing what the letters are and pronouncing these words. Someone will raise your hand and I'll give you the floor. Okay, Shaquan, the floor is yours. Did I see her hand up? Oh, Shuzai? I'll let you go next. Okay, Shaquan, you can go first. I'm gonna take a try it. So that will be the limit. No, no, no. Uh, go oh. Which one, are you on number one? Yeah, you're on number one. Okay. 
So that will be uh, uh Oh, oh, you said Lamed. Yeah, this, yeah. this, this is Lamed. This is Lamed. <laughs> okay. I'm to pronounce it out. Okay, yeah, this is Lamed. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just, I'm just trying to pronounce it out. Okay. okay. And that is the Batak. So that would be um, La La. Okay, so it's consonant, vowel, consonant, right? So mm -hmm. consonant, vowel. So remember when the vowel sound is under the, the, uh, the consonant, then you pronounce this as well as this, and then the syllable is going to come next. So you have. So I'm trying to. La. La. Ha, la. Ha. La. Ha. Oh, la. Ha. Okay. La. Ha, la ha. Oh. Okay, so the next one. That is, uh, oh my goodness gracious. So that's a cough. Mm -hmm. And that is a commence. Nope, not a commence. Oh, oh yeah, you're going to the vowel. I'm, I'm, I'm right. sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's ka, ka, a, ka. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm no, you already got it. So you got the car right. So you got a ka right, and now y'all have to do is pronounce this letter. Ka, a, ka. No, so the, the I sound is coming directly after the ka, sound ka. of the, the letter itself, mm -hmm. along with this vowel under it, makes the same sound. So as you have the ka, a qua here, some say qua, some say ka. So if you have ka, and you have a qua, and you also have here what? And the, uh, ba, a ba. Well, that oh, is a, a cough. What letter is this? That's a cough. What sound does cough make? A cough. Oh, I can't pronounce that sound. I'm so sorry. It's okay, difficult. Um, That's the one of the sounds I have confusion trying to pronounce. Okay, so the cough, um, the cough here. Um, So you have ka ka here. Ka ka. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the aleph, and then the um. So that will be a uh, a. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. So you're trying to you trying to figure out this vowel. Yeah, I know that's the. I know that is the um, surat that, that makes that. So what sound it. does the vowel make? A. Okay. And that's, so that's called a tessery. It's called a tessery. tessery. And um, for the sake of trying to remember, um, I know you're trying to remember the name of it, but if you can remember the sound, that's the most important thing. If you can identify okay. and remember the sound, because whenever you read, you're not going to actually really read every letter, call out what the vowel is, and you're just going to be pronounced the word. So as long as you know the sound that it makes, um, you know, so that's what you're looking forward to right now. But it's called the okay. tessery. So you're right. That's the aleph, and that's the tessery, which makes the a sound. Okay, what do we have here? And that's the lamed. So that's that's a le a le I don't. I gotta practice more. I'm gonna uh, retreat. Because no, no, you're not going to retreat. You're doing well. No, 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 no retreat, no retreat, no surrender. All right, so okay. just go back to the basic rules that you already know. So you know okay. your letters. So this is an aleph okay. tessery, right? Yes. This is a lamed, and what vowel is this? And th th that's a cigar, which makes, it make? it makes the eh sound. Okay, okay. it's in bed, right? So mm -hmm. you have a, le. A, and le. And that's the... um. <laughs> Ka. Okay, so what you giving up for? That's the ka, <laughs> as you said, because uh, just do do realize that that's the cough at the end, and now it has what here? What vowel does it have here? And it has the uh, the ah sound. The ah sound. There. So that's why you say ele ka. Ele ka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. not worried about trying to really recognize any words right now. You're just recognizing the sounds and getting familiarized with this letter at the end. Of the word. That's pretty much what we're doing right now. All right. So okay. no, we're giving up. You're almost to the end. Okay. So that is um the side day. Or is that no, that's the um I N. 
Mm-hmm. So that would be the the ah. Mm-hmm. Um, le. Mm-hmm. And that would be the uh, ka. Okay. So you say ale ka, right? Ale ka. So if you hear uh, in greeting, if someone say shalom alecha, shalom alecha, shalom lecha, you know, you're starting to realize this, uh, these two letters are at the end of uh, shalom alecha, okay? So alecha, alecha, okay? Good job. So the next one is a, um, a bet with the ah, so that's ba. Mm-hmm. Is that a, I can't see that one. What a, is that the noon? Okay. So noon. N- um, I just had this one. Sorry. So that's the E eh sound. Mm-hmm. So that's ne. Uh-huh. Okay, and then the so just uh-huh. remember if it's consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant. So anytime you have uh this yod, sometimes this yod is gonna be placed here, but sometimes this vowel will already cover what's gonna be here. And oh. so you have to know when it's gonna be pronounced as a uh consonant or when it's gonna be pronounced as a vowel. But as long as you recognize this, I'll let you slide with it. You know what sound this makes. But what I'm focusing on now is this right here. What is this again? And that is the ka. Okay. Next and word. then that is, no, that's the sade. So that would be um, sa, sa ka. All right. That's why I'm, ha- I'm happy this happened. Look at it again. Okay. So I'm looking. So that's not. Look, look at this, and then look at this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, sad. Okay, so that would be sad da. Sad da. All right, last word. And that is the memo. So that with the turret, so that would be. Say, uh, uh-huh. say, the, oh, you, I'm you sorry, may, uh-huh, may, uh-huh. may, uh, uh-uh, not may, ah, uh. that's not a, look at the letter again. What's this letter? Is that the oh, that's is that the sade? Yes, okay, I'm sorry. So, may, sa. Mm-hmm. Mesa. Mesa. What was his last letter? That's a, is that a vet? Vet or bet, yes. Vet. So okay. You, that's the whole point is to recognize the difference between when this is a cough at the end versus mm-hmm. one of these other lookalike letters. All right, you did a good job. Yeah, okay, don't I gotta practice don't, more. Don't, don't ever retreat. No, it's not even just about practicing more. This is like our first time going through this portion, so you did good. Just Thank don't ever um, abandon what you've already learned. You've already learned your letters, right? Yes. You've already sir. learned your vowels. So don't be intimidated when you see something different. Just say, well, I know I know this is a, a, a Lamed and a, and a Patak, and I know this is a, that's a <laughs> I know this is a, a, a Kuf. Uh, uh, this is going to be a Ka, a Kwa sound. I know this is a and all the new stuff you start adding it in so it's not don't don't be intimidated by it um we that's why i said we're going at a beginner's pace so you did a great job my sister great job hold on thank you pray to the most high all right zamiria you said you want to do the next one right um can y'all hear zamiria say something can you hear me no yes i can hear you okay um that's a mem with the patak Okay, mem for talk. Okay, and a yod with the herek, okay. and then a final mem. So that would be my yin. My what? My yin. My yin, which is what? Water. Which is water. Good job, sweetie. All right. Then that would be. <laughs> Shamaya, we don't need your help on this, sweetie. Let let Zai do it, okay? 
<laughs> it would be an ayin with the batak and a final min, which is um. Okay, we have um. Okay. Then a aleph with a tessery uh -huh. and a final mim. So that would be aim. Good job, sweetie. Okay. Then that would be a mim with the patak and a zade with the quamets and a he. And that would be ma za. Matza. Uh -huh. Matza. Uh -huh. And then that's a shin with a quamets and a mim with the patak and a resh. Uh -huh. So that would be sha mar. Okay. Then that's a bet with the pasak and a final mem. So that would be bomb. I mean, yeah, bomb. And then that's a zade with the pasak. Look at it again. I mean, a zade with the comets. Mm -hmm. A, I know this, but a pay. And a y and a final noon. Mm -hmm. So that would be za, za, za. Zapoon. Zapoon, or what else? What it could it possibly be? Zapoon. Zapoon or Zapoon? Oh, Zapoon. Okay. And we're going to go over the ones with the dots here. Great, great job, sweetie. Great job. All right. And we have one left. Do we have another volunteer to do the last line. All right, Shashamar, the floor is yours. Yeah, and I'll give it a shot. Uh, all right, so we have bet bet with um the test array, so it would be, and then we have it's not a noon, it's not a nine. Yeah. Is that a, uh, a va? No, 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 no. Not a va. It's the first thing you said it was not. Oh, it's a, it's a new. Oh, yeah, yeah, new. Remember, okay. Final form. Final form. You know, remember, the trick is going to be for you to catch this last letter. It's all about what's this last letter going to be. Hey, okay. How did they start doing that again? So it would be. Hold on, Shashma. I don't know why this thing is doing so many day. I can't get it to get back off. Just click on the outside of it, Moray. Just click somewhere in the page. Okay, Toda. Okay. Okay, so what do you got here, uh, Shashma? So what is it going to pronounce? Bainu. It's going to be Bain. Bain. Okay, Bain. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we have uh, Shen. Shen with the commence, which is the A, so B. And then we have... Uh, is that the new, the different form? Okay. Then we have the he, the hey. Okay. okay. So be. Sign it out. Shot. Shot okay. new hey. No, no, new no, hey. no, 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 no. You make you add some extra syllables in there, some extra sounds. So you've already pronounced everything out and said what it was. So just stick to your rule. It's consonant vowel. Consonant vowel, right? So what is going what are these two gonna pronounce together? The shin and the commits. What sound would this make? Sha. Huh? Sha. 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 Okay. Sha. And then you have a noon and the same vowel. What was make? What nah. sound would this make? Nah. Okay. So you have shana. Shana. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Okay. Shana. We have a noon again with the Sharik, which is the E sound. And then we have the Yod, and then we have the final form for none. So it would be, okay, well, final form. Ne okay. Yep, yep, you might, that's the right sound so far. Nia. Nia. So what you trying to say is Nian or Nin? Nin, okay. Nia or Nin. All right, Kane. So we got the noon again with the Kemet. So it'll be, and then we have the Tet, the Batak, which is the A, 
Then we have the I N, which is a silent letter. So we'll be. Now, Ty. Good job, good job, good job. We have the noon again. Mm -hmm. Hamet. Okay. Uh, we have um, Tab, which is the T. Then we have uh, a top again. And then we have the final form for noon. So it'll mm -hmm. be. Now, Ty. Mm -hmm. Hold Nathan, Nathan, and Nathan. Nathan, Nathan, okay. And real quick on this letter, um, in the modern, a lot of times they, they say it's pronounced as a T, but uh, in the more ancient, if you hear me in the Zakan Yaqua, when we reading it from the paleo, we pronounce this more as a TH uh, because the tet, uh, which is here, is more of the T sound. This is more the TH sound, but we recognize it both ways for the sake of going by what the modern uh, people will speak in the land. But uh, so if you hear someone say like the name Nathan, Nathan, this is gonna be the letter that's there. Um, but you may hear some people say uh, like Natanya, they're, they're not pronouncing the TH, okay? But good job. Okay. Okay, so we have Wamed, and then we have, um, it's a vowel, but it has the Kogumwa, so it takes the sound of the O. This one, I got messed up, I confused with this one. Uh, so it would be, and then we have the last letter is a final form, none. Mm -hmm. So that would be Loon. Okay. Good job. Uh -huh. Good job. Then we have the Alpha, which is the silent leather. Then we have the Sigo, which is the E. So it would be, then we have a uh, Pay. So it would be. Yeah. So remember, if this is going to be silent, you're only going to make the vowel sound here. If this is going to be silent, so you yeah. have the air, what? F, F, A. F, A. F, A, S, A. F, A, S, A. So good job, uh, family. So again, this is a quick summary of, uh, as they call some of the pitfalls, letters that look alike. So we have the gamel that looks a lot like the noon here. But the difference is this kind of looks like a high heel shoe of, of a female. The gamel, which makes it different from the noon. But other than that, they look pretty much the same. Then you have here the wa, I mean, sleek out, the final form noon, the final form cough, and the dalit. These three can look the same, but as you see, as you start going through, you get more familiar with them. You have the, uh, the, uh, the beginning cough and uh, the bet, they can look a lot alike. You have, I've never really seen many people get these mixed up, but it's a possibility. So you have uh, the zari and uh, the aleph, when they say some people get these mixed up, that's never really been a common mix up but i guess you know some people have witnessed that um then you have also saying the cough in the noon um the the tav the ket and the hay can all look similar the difference here is one has an open here one has a closing and the two that close have the closed tops it has this extra part of simple right here at the end at the bottom then we also have uh let me go back To. Is the screen still up on y'all side? Yeah, and I can, yeah, see, I can it. see it. Uh, All right, it left me. I lost. Give me a moment. All right, there we go. And so then we have here the Yod, the Y, and the Zion that could actually look a lot alike. And then you have here the Tet, the Tet, and the Mim, which can look alike. All right. So these are, again, what we're most focusing on was the final forms. So if y'all would, please write your final forms down and memorize them. Remember which five letters take on a final form at the end, uh, at the end of a word. So it's going to be the kaf, the mem, the nun, the pe, and zade, which is going to have the final forms here. They have the same numerical value and the same sound. Um, they just have a different in, difference in appearance. All right. I'm going to stop this. Are there any questions on this point before going forward? All right, so bear with me. Um,
some nice stuff over here. All right. So we're going to do now for uh, the Hebrew readers so they can get back polished up on their reading. We're going to be going to the book of Shemot, commonly called Exodus, chapter 20. All right, Exodus chapter 20. And do I have a volunteer uh, for the Hebrew readers that would like to uh, take a shot at getting your reading polished back up so we can get back um, to the reading of the Hebrew? Do we have anybody that wants to uh, start off as a first volunteer? All right, uh, two participants have their hands raised. I can't see who they are. So I think I seen uh, Don Yaquav hand come up first. So Don, if you would like to read first, you can go ahead. And, and Maury, uh I got... Uh... My bot and my Ben here, so uh, it's my bot that wants to try it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Why uh, the bear Elohim at eight? Eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, call, wait, yeah, call Barim. Mm -hmm. Ha le mm -hmm. le amor. All right, hallelujah, good job. One more line, one more line. Hallelujah. One more, okay. Anoki Yahua Yahua Elohim. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Eloheka, uh -huh. um, Asher, Asher, uh -huh. Hosatika, uh -huh. Sa yeah, you said it right. Uh -huh. okay. Me Eret, Me Sarim, Mitzrayim, uh -huh. uh, me be, be wait me be eat me bait mm -hmm. uh abarim abarim all right hallelujah good right. job wait i meant to say abadim <laughs> all right did you say uh uh you had two that want to read in your house adele uh, Maury, I was just letting you know that both of them are here. So uh, when I raise my hand, it could be either one of us. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, who was the second hand? Was the second hand up? Was Alma? Was that correct? Or oh, I seen another hand go up. Who's the next hand that's up, Adon? Because I can't see it on my screen. Alma, Alma, Maury. Okay, yes, ma'am. Alma, if you would pick up for me, please. Okay, now I gotta see if I can see this. Okay, all right, a three, a three? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Lo, ye, 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 lo, ye, ye, la, ka, alahim, akarim, al, pane. Okay. Is that a commence under the al? Yeah, okay. Which which Alahim okay. talking about? Um, oh, in Al in Al Alahim. Uh, no, in Akaram. Akaram. Yeah, that, that was uh Akram. that was a uh a, a, a yeah. top, but it still makes the same time. Yeah, so you were right. Uh, a top. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, and for Lo the Asa, the Asa. Mm -hmm. Laka, Pasel, 
uh, 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 Wakao, uh, the Muna, mm -hmm. Ashea, okay, Bashama In, Nima L, Wakia, Baaretz, Mitaka, Washia, Bash. Bamayam, Bamayam, mm -hmm. Bamayim, Bamayim, mm -hmm. uh, Takab, La Arets. Go, go back to this one time. I'm a, I don't know if I missed the sound or not. Uh, uh, me, me, uh -huh. Takab, uh -huh. mm -hmm. La Arets. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great job, I'm a great job. I'm reading off a little off my little phone. I couldn't hardly see the uh, vowels. Um, I had it on my my um, laptop, but that went off. It's, it's it's right when I was getting ready to read. Okay, well that did a great. You did a great job. All right, is there any other hands up, uh, Adon? Not yet, Maury. Okay, so we're gonna go back to um, to just verifying that in our English that is lining up with what uh, the Hebrew actually has. So we have why the bear Elohim et call Hadabarim Ha'aleh La Amor. It says, and God spake all these words saying, so we can see that in the English, in the English, it lines uh lines up with what was already written um, in the Hebrew. And so the reason why we're doing this, we want to make sure that it's lining up. And while going here in Hadabarim, what you see here, this is one of the letters that you just learned, a final form mem here. So this is a final form mem. Okay, that we just covered um, in Hadabarim. The root here is the bar, which is going to be words. So Hadabarim, the words. He spoke all these words. Hadabarim. Okay. Um, and what's the words that he started off speaking to the Israel when they came out? He says, Anoki Yahuwah Elohecha Asher Hotsetika. Um, he says, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim or your God, which brought you my Aretz, Mitzrayim, my Beit, Abadim. Um, uh, who brought you from, so the mem in front of this is making it from, from Aretz, from land, Mitzrayim, Egypt, Mabet, house, Abadim, Abad is served, so Abadim, again, here's one of the, uh, your final forms that you just went over, the mem at the final form, the Yod mem is making it a plural, Abadim out of the house of servants, or the house of bondage, plural, because it was, uh, the nation was there. Um, when you come here, we have the Loch Yihye, Lacha Elohim, Acharim, Al Pene. Um, so we have Lo or La'a, we depend on the dollar, but since we're reading about the modern, so we have Lo Yihye. So uh, Lo, no, or do not have, uh, which come from the root word to exist or to be Haya here, Yihye, do not have Lacha before, uh, before you, Elohim. Elohim, which is going to be uh, the plural, uh, the Yod, Mem, is going to make this uh, Elah here plural, Elohim, Acharim. So do not have, uh, do not have to you Elohim, Acharim, others. So Acharim is actually others. So it's plural. So do not, it says, do not have in the English that thou shall not have other gods before me. But here it still means the same thing, but they, they actually have this plural. So Akharim meaning others. So do not have uh, to you before Al Pane, before my face, do not have other Elohims before his face. So you're gonna bring before your face by you actually having them unto you. And then we have the Lo Ta'asha Lacha Pasel. Do not make any graven image. So that's the uh, the short form of the command. Do not make any graven image. Wachal uh, Tamunah. I share. So uh, what we can see is that when we go through from the, the Hebrew to the English, and as we start going into more vocabulary words, you'll be able to pick them out yourself. Um, I know Alma is one and Kiara does a pretty good job also, but do for the sake of time. Um, I went on went through it, but I, I know that Alma generally herself can parse her own verses out and Kiara does a, a, a fairly good job herself of parsing the verses out. So that, that's the whole reason for us studying the language so that we can actually see what's actually written in the uh, Hebrew text. So when we come over to our English text, we're verifying if something is there. So for an example, um, when you get to the, uh, 
to the New Testament, right? So there are those, and I'm going to stop to share for a moment, and I'm going to close with this, and we're going to get ready to go to the two-minute warning afterwards. But um, there, are, there are words and terms that have been added to the scriptures, right? That is the reason why there's some um, brothers who do not subscribe to the New Testament. They do not subscribe to the New Testament because of certain words and stuff that was added and certain things that they believe to be contrary to what was actually written. However, some of those things that are added, we know they're added for the purpose of the religion of Christianity, right? So they've added terms such as in some KJV Bibles, you will see the term Easter added to the New Testament. But when you go and you look up the word Easter in the New Testament, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, let me see if I can just give you a quick example of why we're doing this. Um, what version has Easter in it? Um, Kanaya, do you remember which version has Easter in it? Or is it um, I think it's just the regular KJV. I think. Uh, I'm pretty. I think it's a KJV, Maury. I'm. I'm pretty sure it's KJV. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, yeah, let's, let's uh, just pull, let me pull some up real quick. Uh, I'm getting so tired of this computer today. What is all this stuff? Y'all bear with me one moment, I'm gonna show this and then I'm gonna go get ready to turn it over to you, Don. Um, So we can go to the book of Acts. All right, so here's one of the things that we wanna start doing when we're dealing with uh, family, friends, and loved ones. So they don't think that we're being offensive to what they believe. But we want to show them that the word itself, just go to the scripture where it says study to show yourself approved. So study literally means to study something, not just read and, and don't like really go into it and meditate on it. You need to study. You need to research what you're actually looking into. So instead of us just telling them you shouldn't do something because it's pagan, what we need to do is learn to be better witnesses of our creator and be more informative in the word ourselves, so that we can come to such passages as this. It says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and deliver him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So that's why if you tell someone that reads their Bible that believes in Jesus commonly according to Christianity's version of what they think they believe in, it would be very offensive for you to knock something that they can prove is in the Bible. And we should be able to understand that from a more informative mindset because it's in the Bible. So if it's in the Bible, then they standing on what they've been taught by their preachers and it's in the Bible. So you speaking against the Bible and y'all saying y'all Hebrew is like, you speaking against the Bible. Easter is in the Bible. Okay, then show me where Easter is in the Bible. And now let me show you something in regards to Easter. So when you go to the word for Easter, what does it tell you? G3957 of Chaldee origin compared to 6453, the Passover. The day of the festival of the special sacrifice connected with, then they throw Easter back in right here, but it's Passover. There is no such word as Easter ever used in the text. This is the translators. They've added this to the definition, but it should not have us do away with the New Testament because they've tried to insert one of their words, but they're telling us of origin, of child origin compared to 864.53, which is Pesach. Pesach. So once you go to Pesach, it has absolutely no mention of Easter here whatsoever because it wasn't Easter, it was Pesach. So when you wanna know what was actually in the word, that's the reason why we're studying the language to make sure that the words they're giving us in English lines up with the words that was actually in the Hebrew or actually in the Greek in the, uh, in the uh, Brick Kadashah. So again, it says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in the prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him to the, uh, to the people. Um, so when you go back and you read the rest of this chapter of this passage, you're going to find out this was doing the what? The season of unleavened bread. So if it's doing the season of unleavened bread, then, uh, well, I'll go back just a little bit just to prove all things so you know how to do. So now it starts off. 
Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church of the ecclesia. And he killed James, the brother of John, with sword. And because he saw it pleased the Yahudim, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of what? Unleavened bread. So now if it's telling you then were the days of unleavened bread, this is a little cultural portion right here. The reason why it's imperative that we know our culture, so we need to know our culture. Our culture uh, has a, a heritage associated with it, a language, customs, feast days that are all written within that Torah. So if it is telling us it's doing the days of unleavened bread, if we're going to study to show ourselves approved, we have to go back to see what unleavened bread was all about to know that he was taken during the time of so-called Easter. Then when we go back and look at unleavened bread, we're going to find out there was no Easter mentioned in association with unleavened bread. When we look this word up for Easter, and we see it's of origin, 865.43, which is Pesach, we see that Pesach and unleavened bread, which is commonly called the same feast a lot of the times, he was taken during the time of what? The feast of Pesach and unleavened bread, not Easter. Easter was never intended to be in the word. It was never written in the word. And anything that is in the New Testament, just for, for all of us to understand, it has to refer back to Torah Tanakh. And there was never an Easter mentioned in Torah Tanakh. And there was never anything about no Easter bunny and laying eggs and hunting eggs ever. So the mindset that Christians have when they're reading this, they're thinking about the Easter bunny and doing the time of Easter when they come together for the Easter egg hunt, which never existed in the Hebraic faith. That's an addition. So what we must do while we're studying this language is to also, when we're studying in the English, go back, whether it be the English, I mean, whether it be the Greek or the Hebrew, we need to go back to see what was written there in the Hebrew, the Greek, the Aramaic, versus what they commonly have given us in English, because it's English translation, a lot of times is trying to push, push the view of Christianity into Yah's word, as did the Roman Catholic Church insert a whole lot of other things, such as Christmas and all those things with the Father's word that has no place. And so once we have more information and we can present them with a more informative view, it should help us be able to wake our people up better without being as offensive. But I've been doing this for a long time, but still most of them are not going to hear. But just so that you know that, because there will be some that are smart enough that if you present them with the certain information, they may go and research it out and they may be converted. So with that, we're going to yield at this point. And I turn the floor over to you, Zakane uh, Yaikwa. Uh, uh, what Ms. Lillian put her here, let me see what I got a comment on the screen real quick. Uh, right. Uh, yes, uh, Miss Lillian, yes. And Easter itself derived from the goddess uh, uh, Esther, which is the goddess of fertility. So they snuck a way of associating a pagan deity or pagan goddess in with the worship of our celebrated feast of Pesach and Unleavened Bread, which again, all those little subtle plant implants into the word is the things that cause Israel to go off. All right, so I'm gonna yield at this point. Uh, Adon, the floor is yours. Uh, 